Okay. So what's going on with Persnickety today? He doesn't feel like himself. The only thing I could think of is like some mouse poison. He seems to be defensive of his rear end the most. But I would like to get a radiograph, see if there's any kind of trauma. The other possibility, cats can have a thing called a saddle thrombus. It's okay, bud. It's very painful. Is there a, a cure? No, hopefully that's not it, but I want to prepare you for all of the options. Yeah, I'm sorry. Change of plan with this guy. Um, I think that he's blocked Tom. So we need to get a cysto on him and then also some blood work. Okay, so from observing him earlier, um, I was able to see that he's straining to urinate and that is a sign to me that he's probably suffering from block tom syndrome or feline lower urinary tract disease. They form stones in their bladder and the stones can obstruct the ureter and then they can't urinate and their bladder becomes quite large and painful. It's a very serious condition, but lots of times even when if you can get them through it, they will re-block. So, I'm sorry. I know that it's really stressful for you and you, now you have to go to class on all this, so. <laughs> That's just how my last cat died. I'm sorry, and you know, you know that it is a serious condition, but we're gonna definitely try our best. So. We are gonna go ahead with the block tom treatment, so we'll kind of go off of that. So, we wanna try and pass a catheter? Yeah. Okay, let's sedate kitty cat. Right now we're going to sedate Persnickety um, and get him completely under general anesthesia. Once we've got that done, um, we're going to try to pass a catheter through um, his penis to relieve um, his bladder. You ride a roller coaster when you're a veterinarian. You're in the situations where you do everything that you can and they still don't turn out okay, you need to try to get that resolved before his bladder ruptures. Now what I like to do is take a syringe, connect it to the end with that saline, and kind of gently, gently try and push and retropause the stone if you can. See if we get any movement, you know, past, past the catheter until you have some resistance. Okay, go ahead and pulse. I can feel the stones at the tip of it. Yep. So it looks like you made about an inch. That's as far as I can go. Okay, now let's get a syringe and draw back on there. See if we can encourage urine output. Okay. But I can feel his bladder, it's about the size of an orange, which is definitely abnormal for a cat, and it kind of shows you how, how far the bladder wall really can stretch to try and compensate. We're trying to get the bladder to expel out this catheter. There we got a little bit. His bladder's quite big, and there's stones that could be obstructing our catheter. There, that's good. It's looking cloudier as we go, huh? At 24 hours, we'll pull the catheter and see if he can urinate on his own can feel the stones inside of his penis. Can you? It's yeah. gritty, gritty yeah. feeling. So this right here, this white debris, is a, a stone, a fairly large stone that was that blocked just um, past the tip. And I was able to break it up with my fingers by squishing it around. And then Dr. Jamie was able to propulse it out by squeezing the bladder. And so right now, we're able to express the bladder without a catheter in at this point. Basically, what we're looking at right now is to get all the irritation in his um, urethra to calm down and uh, keep that bladder opening patent. Definitely spend the night, maybe two nights. So, so far, it's going well. Persnickety's case is a situation that I haven't um, carried my own case with before. So that allowed me to learn, um, with Dr. Jamie helping me, exactly how to treat that case. And in the veterinary world, you always say, see one, do one, teach one. And so now I'm on the teach one stage, so. Looks like he's still urinating well. His pee pad is wet. Well, this morning he's comfortable. He's not painful anymore. He's not trying to strike or be aggressive with me, which is a sign of pain in cats. And he's doing much better. You ride a roller coaster when you're a veterinarian. You're, the highs are really high and the lows are really low. And so when I come back in and I see he's doing well, you know, that makes me feel awesome about myself. It makes me feel like, oh, I've got this. You know, I, I'm understanding and I'm learning and I'm, I'm doing the best thing for the pet. It's okay, but just a little grumpy. Just a little grumpy. <laughs>